After 28 years of marriage, Floyd Engel and his wife Mary could not imagine life without each other. On June 23, 1992, in Napoleon, Indiana, Floyd began his day never thinking that this might be the last morning they'd share together. <laughs> hey. That morning we got up and ate breakfast. You have a good day. I kissed her goodbye. Okay. Now take it easy. Bye bye, sweetie. That's pretty much a tradition. Every weekday morning, Mary left for work early enough to drive the 16 miles into town by 8 a.m. It's about 20 to 10. So I thought, well, I'll just give her a call. Stacy, how you doing? Here's Mary there. Let me talk to Mary, please. And they said, no, she ain't what? got here yet. You kidding? I just knew it was something bad uh, that happened. That's here about two hours ago. I just was thinking, you know, I gotta find her. I gotta find her. I was gonna backtrack the way she goes to work, trying to see if I could see something. I just knew if she would have been right alongside the road where somebody seen her, I would have heard by now. As I was coming around the curve, I seen skid marks. I just knew it was her. I couldn't find her in the car. I thought, oh, God, she got thrown out, too. Harry! Harry! As I was hollering for her, I heard a low, faint moan. I could see her laying down by the creek. Her eye was covered with blood, and her bone was sticking out of her arm. I could lose her right there. And that's when I said a, a prayer. I heard a couple cars go by. Hey, I'm down here! They couldn't hear me. I didn't want to leave her there, but I had to to get help. There wasn't no easy way or fast way, it was straight up. So I grabbed hold of the limbs and anything I could grab hold of to get up the hill. Floyd drove to the nearest home to call for help. Rescue units with the Batesville Fire Department were immediately dispatched. Ripley County, 693. As soon as Ripley County Sheriff's Deputy Bill Davison got to the scene, he radioed for the extrication unit. The first medic to reach Mary was EMT Dan Sunderman. Ma'am, can you hear me? She was laying in a, in a pool of blood that had obviously come from the head. Can you tell me how you're feeling? I thought there's no way she's alive. I needed every piece of equipment out of the back of that ambulance if I was going to do anything, anything at all with this patient. EMT James Weigel was among those treating Mary. She had a very, very weak pulse and a very, very weak blood pressure. She had what we call raccoon eyes, those signs of severe head trauma. Bag. Okay, I got a backboard. She was well beyond the golden hour. So we knew we were fighting time and fighting shock. And this time, I really didn't know whether we could save her or not. 
Volunteers with the local Napoleon Fire Department also responded, including firefighter first responder Larry Shaddy. It's a fear in every EMT's mind. The next wreck could be somebody you know or somebody you love, your mom, your sister, your brother, your son. It's always there. I looked over and I saw Floyd's car. I said, well, you know, what's he doing here? Then I, I looked over the hill and I saw Mary's car. I said, oh, my God, that's, that's my sister Mary. Chavi, go ahead and roll air care. Oh, we're getting her up, Jim. We're going to go ahead and put her in a Stokes okay. basket, and we're going to use the winch on the extrication truck, and we're going to drag her up the hill. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm a... I get thinking there's brain damage or she's got spinal damage or she's going to be paralyzed the rest of her life. Uh, blood pressure's every few minutes. Well, okay. Her. And then I smack myself around. I go, no, we can't do that. You know, we're here to help. Another one of the volunteers who arrived was Jason Engel, who rescue workers knew was the victim's son. The scariest moment was realizing that it was my mother down in the bank. Is she okay? We don't know what the statistics are on her yet. It was hard staying there. It was real hard. So what? Let's go. Stand. Stand. I got her. Okay. Are we in the basket? Let's get the straps down. Our number one problem was with the blood pressure. It was dropping quick. Okay. My assessment was she won't be alive by the time we get her to the top of this hill. Keep her protected from the branches. At the point that we found out that there was family there and on the fire team, it just raised the intensity. Easy. Got these stumps in the way here. We're letting the wind I got your foot there, moving for a second. Well, there must have been six or eight of us holding on to the Stokes basket as we went up this hill, trying to maneuver it through the trees and get it up this embankment that was very steep and very muddy. Come on. The winch, of course, doesn't pull very fast, and everybody just wants to go, go, go. Get some help down at that tree to help pull. By this time, more than three hours had passed since Mary's accident. Just as we were getting to the top of the hill, air care was touching down. It was like an angel dropping down right there on the road in front of us. The worst part was going to the hospital because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if she was still okay. Mary Engel was flown to the University of Cincinnati Hospital where she was examined by trauma surgeon Kenneth Davis. She had a laceration on her forehead. Her pelvis was fractured. And she had what was obviously a broken arm. But the life-threatening part of her injuries was her stomach was in her chest as a result of her diaphragm being ruptured. Okay. Without getting any further tests, we went straight to the operating room. No, give me a bad cough. Mary underwent five hours of surgery to try to repair her ruptured diaphragm, shattered elbow, and fractured pelvis. During the 16 days she was hospitalized, her family was never far from her side. We went in there and Mary's arms hanging up here in the sling and she goes like this. I said, she waved goodbye, she waved goodbye. <laughs> so she's gonna be all right. One year later, Mary is still undergoing treatment for some of her injuries. They have operated on the elbow twice. They've operated on the shoulder twice. My arm won't bend straight out, but I can use my arm. And considering they was going to cut it off, I feel very, very lucky. Hit it hard. There you go. Way to go. I'm proud of you. I think my mom is safe for her kind-heartedness. To help you out. She's always happy. She's always in a good mood. I'll do the She's always been there for me. The dishes. How many times? <laughs> they tried cleaning you. I just can't think of her not being around. I'm, I'm glad that we were there, and uh, we're glad that you're still here with us, sis. Thanks, brother. There's a lot of people that needs to get 
a lot of thanks for helping me out. But special thanks I need to go to God and Floyd. Because without them too, I just wouldn't be here. You just don't realize how close you are until something like this really happens. She's a determined person. She's strong-willed. She's always there giving me support. I know, but it's the truth. She's a lady that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Okay.